welcome. You're watching Suncoast Spotlight, and I'm your host, Jeannie Corcoran, and I'm here in partnership with the Suncoast Technical College and their digital filmmaking department, as well as the educational channel. And we have some amazing guests this morning, particular favorites of mine, Mark and Jeannie Simon. They are the co-founders and the creators of Sell Your TV Concept Now. They know all about pitching, selling, and much, much more, and you're going to find out right now. So, welcome, Jeannie and Mark. How well, are you? Well, thanks for having us. Always good to see you. Oh, it's great for you to be here. They came all the way down from Orlando, rushed down here in the early morning rush hour traffic, so yep. you get an extra, you know, brownie points plus a little gold medal for making it on time. I'll take a brownie. Good, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coffee, donuts, and brownies. Right? <laughs> uh, I don't know, I never know quite where to start with you all because you have such an amazing background from... Uh, Nickelodeon, from television, from pitching your own projects. Mark, you're an amazing artist. You have the leading storyboard company, really, in... In, in, the, in the southern U.S., yeah, but, southern but I've US. also written the main book in the industry right. that's used. I think we're in six or seven languages mm -hmm. now uh, yeah. that trains studios all over the world on how to storyboard. Right. And for yeah. students out there of filmmaking, whether you're young or old, whatever your stage of development is in script writing or creating content for television or film or new media or web, storyboards matter and they really help you they help you structure prepare mm -hmm. well i can explain it beautifully because yes, everyone do. understands a comic book so yes. basically a storyboard is a comic book version of a script before it's shot mm -hmm. it is the blueprint that is used to create and build the entire production just like if if i told you i want you to build me a three-story house you're going to have a ton of questions because it could be a thousand different ways right well if you read a script Everyone on the crew can see that script built in a number of different ways. The only way you can build a house is with a set of blueprints. Right. The only way to create a production is with a set of storyboards. I agree. I agree. I don't know they're being taught that much to that extent. And I think it's a shortcoming, when, especially when um, students don't have a lot of pre-prep and a lot of pre-preparation when they're in development. Um, that was where the storyboard should start, isn't it? It should. I mean, a number of schools do, because I know my, uh, my books are, and I've written a number of books, I know they're used in schools all over the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's used enough because storyboarding is not considered sexy. Yeah. A lot of, because I, for instance, I, was, I even taught at UCF for a while, and the students who came in all thought they were Spielberg, and they just wanted yes. to jump straight in, in, into directing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't need to learn anything else. Kind of forgetting the fact that <laughs> Spielberg does his own rough storyboards before mm. it goes off to the other story artists. Right. So, yeah, it's incredibly important. Uh, not the sexiest thing. I think it is, <laughs> but not everyone else does when they're, when they're just learning. But it's incredibly important. In fact, just even, even the, the process of doing the storyboarding between the story artists, the DP, the stunt guys, the effects guys, and the story artists working together mm -hmm. forces the director and the rest of production to think about things they might not think about Otherwise, so just the process of creating it, you find issues and problems and solve mm -hmm. potential issues before you get into production. So the money you spend on storyboarding, you save much more than that in production. Absolutely, time saving and also the visualization of it all is really great. And I know, Jeannie, you do projects of a different kind. Besides the pitching and the concept development and so on we're going to talk about, you also do producing. You've recently produced an award-winning... A documentary. Producer, right? Right. And writing. And writing, See, yes. you're just multi-talented people, <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, you know, so my background is in production. Mm -hmm. So Mark and I, we actually met in L.A. working for HBO mm -hmm. on a show called First and Ten with O.J. Simpson and Shannon Tweed. Back when O.J. was Back the when, good graces. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Kind of a good graces. Kind of a good graces, yeah. So we met on that production, and then we moved here shortly after that to open up the Nickelodeon Studios. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been slimed? I forgot to ask you that previously. I have not, but I've eaten slime. Oh. <laughs> I, I would eat gack all the time. Yeah. It's actually pretty good because yeah, it's, it it's is. It like Jello. Well, it's made. No, it's uh, it's cream and um and the chunks were like it's applesauce. applesauce. Yeah. So it's not it's bad. Whipped cream and applesauce. <laughs> whipped cream and applesauce with some green food color. Exactly yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So it's totally edible. Yeah. Um, so I worked for Nickelodeon. I worked on Clarissa Explains It All and Gullah Gullah Island, Allegra's Window, What Would You Do, Roundhouse, just. Bear a ton the, of shows, though. I was a, big, a producer. Big Bear in the Blue. You know? Well, now, no. Mitchell, now that was created by Mitchell Kriegman, who created Clarissa Explains It All. Oh, so. so he went on, He when he left Nick, he did that show. Mm -hmm. ah. So you came to Orlando. You started Nickelodeon Studios. 
you got that rolling. How long did you stay with them before you branched out into your own endeavor? Oh, I was there at least six years. Yeah, you were there longer than I was. I was there longer. I left after about four years mm -hmm. to work with Spielberg on Sequest when that came in. Oh, sure. One of our, one of mm -hmm. our six in a mix instructors for special effects, prosthetics, and horror makeup and so forth, Greg Baker, did the special oh, yeah. effects and prosthetics on Sequest. Yeah. So oh, that yeah. you can renew acquaintance. Absolutely, there absolutely. So yeah, so that was fun. And that's actually where I got my start in directing. Mm. So I, I did second unit direction on that as well as doing all the concept art and all the storyboarding. Uh, and during that production is when I wrote the first edition of my storyboard book. The third one is out now. And it's also when uh, we launched the storyboard company. So storyboard company. That was what, in 90... 20, 94? 96. No. Or maybe think, 94. No, that was 93, 94. Oh, no, that's wow. right. Yeah. 13, 14 years. Wow. No. And look at you, you're only 30 years old. Or is, no. it, or is it no. 20? 20, yeah, it's 30, over 20, 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> my but <math>. thank you. <laughs> yeah. my, my math is right up there with my personal calendar and time clock in my head today for whatever reason. And um, what is the website for your storybook? I mean, storyboards your storyboarding. Storyboards-east.com, since we're on the East Coast. Yeah, storyboards with an S, hyphen East.com. Okay, right. that's easy to recall. Yep. Mm -hmm. And sell your TV concept now.com is easy to recall. And then you're also doing a do it yourself pitch tool. Yeah. That is our what? Kit, our, our, our DIY TV pitch kit, which we're really thrilled about. We've had it, we've had a, uh, what we called originally our TV pitch school for a number of years, where it was a product of CDs and, and printed material, as Jeannie likes to remember how heavy it was. Well, it was. <laughs> Yeah, you know, seven pounds. So when we sold three, four, up to ten at a time, that was quite a, a lot of that was quite a haul and yeah. a lot of shipping. Yeah, the post office loved you, I'm sure. They did. Or yeah. FedEx. Our assistant got really big arms. <laughs> uh, but then, so then we decided to update it and take everything to streaming video and downloadable yeah. PDFs, and and Jeannie created some really great interactive uh, files for uh, it's basic templates on putting together your pitch package. You literally fill in the blank. We've laid everything out for you and what you need and how, how to put it yeah, together. Yeah, so it's a Word file that you can download onto your computer. Oh, wow. Well. Mm -hmm. And then use it how you want. You know, you fill in your content. I even put, like, put image here. I mean, it's very... <laughs> yeah. It's a roadmap. It's foolproof. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's And we've got videos taking you through not only what to do, but why. The reasoning behind yeah. it and samples of, of existing pitch packages on why they worked. And interviews with network executives and, and successful uh, uh, TV producers and creators. I mean, like the head of, of Showtime, uh, the executives from Saban Entertainment, the uh, Emmy Award-winning uh, producer of uh, Deadliest Catch. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just huge, huge people in the industry. Mm -hmm. And we cover literally every aspect. Of everything. Of everything. Right. They're going to make us go to a quick break. Okay. But when we come back, we're going to learn more about that. And then I want to hear success stories and how you go to trade shows and when people go with you and so many things that you do. I know we can't cram it all in one show, but we're going to try. So stay <laughs> with us. We'll be right back. Florida is on the verge of a new housing boon, and the one thing all new buildings will have in common is heating and air conditioning. The HVAC program at Suncoast Technical College will train you in all phases of ventilation and air conditioning, installation, and maintenance. For more information, log on to suncoast.edu or call 941-924-1365. Suncoast Technical College, career in a year. Welcome back. You're watching Suncoast Spotlight with our guests today, Mark and Jeannie Simon, the creators and co-founders and owners and uh, creative minds behind SellYourTVConceptNow.com. And they do much more than that. And that's what uh, we're talking about that as well as many other things today. Um, how did SellYourTVConcept.com as a business get started? Were people just pulling information and asking for advice and wanting you to mentor them all the time? Well, yeah. we started this business 11 years ago. And what was happening was prior to that, we started creating our own content and pitching it. Like around 1997, we went to our first conference, right. Nappy, in New Orleans. Sure. Yeah. I remember when it was in New Orleans. It was oh, so fun so when it was fun. in New Orleans. Yeah. Then they moved it to Vegas. And I lived there at the time, and not so much fun, you know, when you live there and you go home. Of course, now it's in Miami. Yeah, it's in our own backyard. Home. But anyway, we digress. Yes. <laughs> um, 
So we started pitching our own content back then, of course, making oh, about every mistake possible, but we were still getting to pitch meetings, and we were learning, and we were having some success. We were starting to sell some of our content. And we ended up landing a, a lot, lot of deals. deals. Right. And it took us years yeah. to figure out how to well, do it. Well, yeah, on the job training, that's for sure. Very expensive on the Very job expensive. training. You were yeah. working out all the kinks and working out all the bugs yeah. so that you could teach others how to take Well, the little did we right? know that's what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. So. People kept coming to us and saying, well, how did you get that meeting? Or how did you put that pitch package yeah. together? How did you make that deal? So you make fine. copies of this for us. Like, yeah, and we expensive. were. We yeah. were like sure. spending a lot of time doing this. And finally, we looked at each other. We're like, I think there's a business here. Mm -hmm. We just need to figure out how to set it up. So that's really how it was born. And that was in 2006 that we yeah, started so we, Sell we, Your TV. We've really set up a, a strong process on being able to guide people through every aspect. Because everyone has different needs. Some people have mm -hmm. uh, start with a stronger idea, others weaker. So we always start with an evaluation where our whole team goes over their concept, and then we know where they need to go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like to start that way. Others prefer starting with the, with the kit, the TV pitch kit, sure. which is great because it literally does guide you, you know, through every step of the process. But our team is set up where we have script writers, designers, artists, animators, mm -hmm. Any, any aspect that someone needs along the way, we can fill in the, in the blank to help them get ready to pitch to the network. From helping them write it to helping them edit it and everything in between. Absolutely. Exactly. And we've done that in numerous times. Right. Yeah. Right. I, and I'm going a little off track here, but it, it, I think it's, it's so interesting. You just worked on a Barbie movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just came out three weeks ago. And it's called Barbie Video Game Hero. I was the senior story artist on that. And I was overseeing all the artists in four different cities. Wow. And I never even saw production in person. It was up in Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, but in order to get the rate that I wanted, any travel ended up coming into my pocket. But nowadays, it's so easy to work virtually. So mm -hmm. I've got clients all over the world. I'm, I'm working on a series out of Eastern Europe right now. We just picked up a series in Ireland. Uh, I just finished working on a, with a director in Ireland. We're doing another series in Canada that we just picked up with um, with Disney. We actually, this morning, we picked it up. Uh, and, and still made it all the way down to here. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Early morning emails before we get on the road. So, yeah. So, it was a nice way to start the day. It was sure. great. So, Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And so, you heard it here great. first on Suncoast Spotlight. Baby. <laughs> a new Disney Breaking line. news. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And then you have also worked on a couple of other interesting ones lately. Chucky, yeah, Installment 7. Is, are, were yeah, you kidding when you said cult this? Of, it, it is the seventh Chucky <laughs> movie. It's, 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 uh, it started as Child's Play. Mm -hmm. The horror movie, if, if any of you remember that, of, of the, the doll that kills people. A little demonic doll. Creepy little doll. Creepy, Creepy little, little doll. doll. Yeah. yeah. And it, what's funny is Jeannie and I actually had dinner with the creator of the Chucky series years ago at another years, conference. Yeah. And I do a lot of work with Universal Studios out of out of L.A. And they called, said, "Hey, do you know uh, Don who who did Chucky?" And I went, "Yeah, I actually know him." Said, well, we need a story artist, so they put me on. So it was great. So we already had a relationship there. Uh, and then I did Woody Woodpecker right after that. Right. And now that's going to be a combination live action and animation, right? Yeah, it's really exciting. The first trailer is up online uh, in Spanish because it's it, Woody is really popular in South America. Huh. How do you do? Uh, 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 in Spanish, how do you do that? It's exactly, exactly the same. The same. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> trivia. Yes. Who did the original laugh of Woody Woodpecker? Who did the original laugh? I'm going to guess, I don't know. You're wrong. I'm <laughs> Bob from... Uh, from uh, Walter Lance created the character. Uh -huh. His wife did the laugh. Oh, that's funny. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so just like us. They're working together. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I bet she never got a residual dollar bond, <laughs> did she? <laughs> Probably, Probably not. not. Yeah. <laughs> Residuals, that's always a great consideration. Now, when you do that sort of thing, um, when you help, for example, a client of yours or student of yours get their pitch sold, Mm -hmm. um, you're paid as their instructors, you're paid as their consultants or, or right. their teachers. Do you ever have an interest in any of the projects? Do they so something really inspired you to where you say, you know, I really want to be a part of this and I want to help you longer and I want to, you know, I'll take a little piece of the back end or something? We never work that way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, reason being, well, there's a lot of reasons behind it. Mm -hmm. If we don't have full control, uh, we don't want a, a piece of it because we have our own. Sure. And so we're going to spend all of our extra time on things mm -hmm. we own 100% of. Right. And we feel that everyone uh, it should get access to the information that we've got. Mm -hmm. And if, if we uh, set up where we would take a piece of it, we would only be able to work with a select couple people. Sure. And we want to be able to help everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's straight pay. Now, there are times that we then get hired on, like Jeannie 
on the documentary. Well, yeah, on the documentary. So that was, she originally came to us as a consultant client. Mm -hmm. So I helped her develop the idea. And then she, she this is the, the documentary we, we mentioned elephants earlier emotion, about, right? yeah, Elephants in Motion. And this is about how the Thai government is conserving and protecting elephants. And my client is from Thailand. This is a very, she's passionate about this project. Real project of the heart. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Gorgeous. So she came from Thailand to Orlando and worked with us. She came and did several development sessions over the course of a week. And we came up with the structure of the documentary. Then we worked on the pitch package. She went, as a client of mine, she went with me to Real Screen Summit, mm -hmm. which is a conference where you can pitch any kind of nonfiction show held right, every... And I've, I've seen you both at multiple yeah. trade shows. Yeah, I've yeah. seen you at Real Screen Summit in Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's what Santa I'm talking Monica about. For yep. Real Screen West and... Right. Oh, yeah, we got place. all of them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we went to the one in D.C. Yeah. So she ended up getting it picked up by a distributor in London, Espresso TV. Mm -hmm. So it's a one-hour documentary, fully fin beautifully edited and shot. She did a great job. She's also a director. Mm -hmm. So that is now being distributed across the world. And winning awards. And right. winning a ton of, award, ton of international awards, mm -hmm. like Best Documentary, Best Woman Filmmaker, Best Storytelling. And then that's, so she ended up hiring me as a consulting producer on the project. And I really helped her out in the post-production in the storytelling element. Sure. Putting all those pieces together. Exactly. I, I know myself from when I was in the business, you can end up with 40 hours of footage yeah. and you have to whittle oh. it down to, you know, 80 minutes or something. But well, you can't lose character and story. Everything yeah. is character and story. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. what we really, really refined. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a great thing. That's yeah. a mm -hmm. thing. Well, we're going to have to take another break just for a second right. and then we'll come back with our last segment. So stay with us because there's more to come on Suncoast Spotlight. Tech Tots Preschool is located on the campus of Suncoast Technical College and is open to the public for preschool and voluntary pre-K classes. Tech Tots has been serving the Sarasota community since 1977, offering a safe and nurturing environment for children three years of age and up. The students in Suncoast Technical College's early childhood education program work side by side with the professional licensed child care providers learning the skills of quality child care services and offering a low child to adult ratio. Tech Tots child care services are offered at no charge to students of Suncoast Technical College and are available to the public at a reasonable rate on a first come first served basis. For more information call Tech Tots at 941-924 one three six five extension six two three eight three tech tots a great start for your tot welcome back you're watching sun coast spotlight and i'm your host Jeannie corcoran and my guests are mark and Jeannie simon a talents extraordinaire in many many fields including selling your concept pitching your concept and much more so let's get into the selling and the pitching and the pitching and the selling um, not only do you teach students, but do you still take them with you on trade shows? Is that something that you still offer as an option on occasion? We do. It's called our Pitch TV Buyers Tour. Ah. Right. And in fact, we have one coming up in June. Oh, Ban and? In Banff World Media Festival in Canada, in the Rockies. Ooh, it is the beautiful. most beautiful place it's in the awesome. world. It's and to our all favorite. Of us, to all of us sweating in Florida <laughs> yeah, in right. June, hmm, this might be a really good idea. Yeah, really. It's not a hardship to go. No, it's awesome. And what dates are those? That's June 11th to the 14th. And they would leave with you from Orlando and fly up? No, and... we meet them there. We meet, oh, you yeah. meet them there. We oh, yeah. do virtual training prior, and we, uh, we go over all their materials, make sure they're ready. And then once we get to the conference, then we help them out. Right. And we have people already who have signed on from Australia. I have a lady coming oh, that's from great. New York. And we'll have, I've got several more. Well, Banff is a very big deal. I mean, it's a very big deal. It's a, it well, what's great about it is mm -hmm. you can pitch any kind of show. You know, so many of the conferences now are specialized, right. meaning just nonfiction or just kids, which are great. But I like this one because right. you can I've take been going anything. I've in New York. I don't know if you've tried that one yet. It's I've heard the it's great. People. And I've, I've gone for the last three years. It's amazing. But it's okay. only scripted and it's right. primarily television. I mean, there are some people that are pitching right. made for TV movies and so on. But you end up... It's a small conference. It's getting bigger, of course. They all get right. bigger as they grow in reputation. 
But the first conference was maybe 200 people, and then it was maybe oh, yeah. three, and then maybe last year, 350, 375. And you end up standing in line next to, you know, the Weinstein brothers, and yeah. have a conversation um, before or after a session with a, a New York producer from A&E or from, and the, the contacts are amazing because it's still very intimate, it's right. still very small. Mm -hmm. Well, Banff has that feel, but it's thousands of people. Yeah. But, but it does have that feel. It's very easy to talk to people there, mm -hmm. and because it's in Canada, everyone is so freaking nice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and they all really speak amazing. English so well. Oh, they, they do. do. Oh, yeah. 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 And a lot well, of French. Yeah. What's nice too is it's set up so as part of your registration fee, there are so many opportunities to pitch. Mm -hmm. There's speed pitching, breakfast with an executive, luncheon with an executive, cocktail with an executive, party with an executive. I mean, it goes on and on. So. Right. And then our group gets extra stuff exactly. because we also set up private meetings mm -hmm. with studio and network executives. Like one of our. Uh, one of our big ones this past year was we got a private meeting with Netflix, and which is the hardest group for people to get a meeting oh, with. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But because of our connections, that was one of many that we had set up for just our group to sit down, and we spent over an hour with the network, yeah, uh, we Netflix did, right? exec. Right. Yeah. When we started our TV Me competition back some years ago, um, before the whole idea got ripped off by another festival in another state that I won't name <laughs> by name, uh, but when we had it the first year in particular, you coached our first winner, right. and he was extraordinary. Oh, right. He had put nine entries into the competition because everything was judged blind. We had no idea that... You know, we ended up with these different winners, and out of 12 possible winning positions, there's the grand prize winner, and then there's three first, second, and third mm -hmm. in three categories, and there's two honorable mentions. So that's 9, 11, 12 possible wins. He won five. Wow. And well, his script was, I remember was the, the Yeah, his right. project was, was really good. very good. Right, Austin McKinley mm -hmm. was his name. And you all trained him, you gave him pitch training, mm -hmm. and then yep. I took him to Los Angeles, and we had phenomenal meetings. We met with we met with the creator of Modern Family, and who's also the showrunner. We met with CBS and ABC. We met with the president of USA Networks, and the head of Sci-Fi Channel, and uh, the partner of George Lopez for George Lopez Productions. Wow. And it just, the list went on and on and on. We had these amazing meetings. And because he had so many entries in so many categories that won something in addition to his grand prize winning mm -hmm. uh, entry, I made sure that he got a smattering of one-on-one -on -one interviews with someone about sci-fi, someone about right. comedy, someone about drama, someone about uh, docu-drama, that sort of documentary kind of drama. And it was an amazing thing. And he was well prepared because he learned the rudimentary absolutes from the two of you so it was great and well and he also had the earlier version of our tv pitch kit too we yeah that was he part did of the that's award. right yeah, so we gave him mm -hmm. that and we did one-on-one -on -one with him so mm -hmm. it, it's great to have the reference materials and then have us to be able to go over it so it's a really great one-two shot mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're hoping to do, we're going to replace TV Me at some point in the future. And what we're looking at now is Omnimedia, because more and more when we meet with independent uh, filmmakers or script writers or producers that want to grow in their skill from local or regional to national and global, um, we're talking more and more about Omnimedia. How do you pitch for the OTTs, you know, the open mm -hmm. transoms, the, the Netflix and the Hulus and the Amazons and the this? How do you frame that differently for limited run series where they only want six episodes, <clears throat> like uh, 11, 22, 63, right. the, the... Believe it or not, there's not a whole lot of difference. That's what I'm hoping. It. There, there, That's really, what I'm hoping. there really isn't. Mm -hmm. But we've actually, even when we've gone to Amazon and to Netflix to pitch our own shows, mm -hmm. there are subtle differences depending that you need to look at is like how are they running things and, and how is it being viewed on that service? Mm -hmm. So Amazon mm -hmm. and Netflix people tend to binge watch. Right. So they, even for kids shows, you can do something that's serialized where it's one long story over multiple episodes. Whereas broadcast, especially for kids, you never do serialized. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know in syndication what order they're even gonna run them in. Think yeah, of and, friends, and the for studios example. don't want it that way. Right. Oh, and Nickelodeon hates that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't want it dated, and they don't, if they're running, well, you know, Nick they don't want to get lost. Well, too. Nickelodeon likes to run a single episode multiple times in the week. Ah. So if they're if the episodes are have to you have to watch them in order, that messes up everything. Sure. Yeah. And it really screws up their programming. Right, right. right. So great. there are some subtle differences mm -hmm. and all of that we cover in depth when we're getting people ready for the conferences. And yeah. I have to tell you, I've I've turned into a binge watcher and I never thought oh. I would. Oh me, we do too. Because you have so little time in the working world, we're all so busy and you know mm -hmm. um, even more so than me. 
but I'm running, running, running. I never even know when I'm going to be home anymore. And I wanted to watch Justified on FX, which, right. oh my gosh, one of my all-time favorite shows. But I knew I was never going to be able to watch it on a weekly basis, so I just waited. And then I binge-watched six seasons of 13 episodes each, or maybe wow. seven seasons of 13 episodes each. My husband and I binge-watched them over about a 10-day period. And I was... That's a staycation right there. I mean, <laughs> well, we did that with Breaking Bad. Oh. oh we go. didn't, because we didn't watch it till after the third or fourth season, I think. Right, coming up to the last right. half season, yeah. yeah. And that show, you know, is dark and we and were by cool. we would watch three in a row we were like totally warped we were like we have to watch something funny before we go something to bed light and easy. Yeah. Let's watch, Exa you know, how i met your mother or, you know, Big Bang Theory exactly. or you know, exactly fun and silly well we'll have to do more of this in the future because i know they're going to tell us we're out of time almost immediately um but just to wrap it all up where do you go next what's your next big plan besides banff we know about that but do you have something new or big or different on your horizon are you just going to do more of this excellent stuff you've already been doing. Well, we're continuing to upgrade our TV pitch kit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of new videos that we're uh, editing right now mm -hmm. that are going to be uh, added in because everyone who buys it gets free upgrades for life. Woo! Uh, so, yes, yeah, so that's a great thing. So check it out, tvpitchkit.com. Now, does, does and, Austin, because you gave him one as a winner's prize, does he get to upgrade his? That was the print version. Oh, okay. It's just the digital <laughs> version is, is free upgrades. <laughs> Mailing is, is a hard thing. I know. Um, so we're working a lot on that, and, uh, and we're about to start on a new production of Dream Factory. So we're in pre-production oh, okay. on an animated show right now for ourselves. Well, keep us posted. And everybody out there that watches Suncoast Spotlight, keep watching. We'll have Gene and Mark Simon back, and we will learn more and keep following their wonderful career. They just do great things. Let them help you. Thanks for watching. <laughs>